In this video, I am going to provide you with a common method used for wood floor framing to, um, I should say, I don't want to say eliminate the possibility, but reduce the possibility of subterranean termites building tunnels onto and attaching these tunnels onto your masonry or concrete um, stem walls. And I've seen quite a quite a network of these tunnels. It's amazing what these subterranean termites can do. And of course, the damage is uh, unbelievable. But what they do is just tunnel up to the wood. And once they get to the wood, you can see a variety of different tunnels or they've got they found a super highway and they're going to start tearing up your floor framing. However, you could stop it by simply installing a piece of sheet metal here, galvanized copper uh, metal. Um, another thing I need to point out is that uh, treated lumber can affect galvanized. The chemicals in the two can cause uh, corrosion to accelerate. Uh, it'll rust a little faster. Copper might be a better alternative, but again, price this uh, could... Uh, Add a, add a lot to the job. And again, these termite shields, you know, if they're in areas where you have subterranean termites, uh, you know, it's kind of like, the, let's just say it costs you an extra $200 to put this metal on. And um, and it works. Well, then great. It costs you $200 to put the metal on and you didn't pay attention or gather all the information on how to put it on then um, that's not going to be good. I'm not really going to provide you with all of the do's and don'ts in this video. I am going to make another video in the future. Just don't know when I'm going to do it. This video is just to give you an idea what the metal actually is and how it works, how it prevents the termites from um, getting in from the ground through the tunnels uh, into your floor framing and then just tearing it up. So it can be, I've seen the metal flat straight across in both directions. I've seen it bent, you know, somebody gets, just gets a piece of uh, sheet metal and they bend it themselves. The metal, of course, can be a little uh, um, dangerous. Metal sharp, you know, um, and you could uh, cut yourself on it. So on the inside, this might not be a problem. You're not going to be crawling around doing work, you know, um, hopefully on the um, in the crawl space area. But on the outside, you're going to be gardening and you could actually um, get cut. So it's something to think about. But you can see here where they're going to tunnel up to the metal and they might tunnel over a little bit or build a big ball here of uh, mud. But uh, the metal usually is going to stop them. And of course, you're going to need to drill holes through the termite shield metal for any anchor bolts. And it would be good to provide some type of a sealant around there, either on top or underneath the metal or both. Um, the metal can lap two inches. That's usually a minimum for um, sheet metal. And uh, make sure that you have some sealant in between the two pieces of metal. So um, from what I gather, I haven't seen it, from what I gather, these termites can eat through plastic and they can eat through other, they can chew their way through a variety of different um, materials. I don't think they can chew through the metal. You know, if you use some real thin, cheap metal, yes, maybe they can, you know. And I can't provide you with what gauge of metal to use for this, um, but I wouldn't recommend using something real flimsy that... Uh, um, could either break because it's brittle or um, something that they could actually chew through. So keep that in mind. And I'm not going to provide you with a miter detail corner. That's an entire video by itself. I will uh, try and make one in the future. If, uh, you know, the future, if, if it's a year or two from now and I haven't made a video, feel free to email me or leave a comment and say, come on, let's get with it if you need some help. So um, we'll leave that at that. See that we have it bent here at a 45 degree angle. Here's another um, thing you're gonna have to do. The termite shield is gonna have to be on top of all of the um, interior footings for the posts. And of course here we have the 
metal sticking over two inches and it's flat it's straight this is fine you can have it come out straight it doesn't need to bend down you can see in a situation like this it would be difficult to bend it down um, leave it straight I'm, I'm, you know that should be fine and of course here's what it should look like sticking past now I went ahead and I moved this one three inches past so we have two inches two inches and then this is three inches I just don't want people to get hung up on the fact that hey we got to keep it two inches you know you can get it can be um, longer it just probably not going to be a good idea to have it smaller now here's another problem if I just left this situation alone here I'm going to prevent the termites from getting around here but I'm not going to prevent them from coming up around the side here so this isn't going to be the best way to um, have the beam near the um, edge of the building foundation and of course the same way here they can just go right around this so this right here isn't going to be the best way but to solve that problem all we need to do is move the footing over something like we have here have the metal sticking out around all of the sides there and then of course we're going to have to move the beam away from the metal and the footing and of course we can uh, get an idea just exactly where we can stop the end of the beam with our joist layout so you can see here where we could move it over a little further if we wanted to so I don't know if this would be a problem for a um, engineer you know they might want it to tie into the footings um, if that's the case you're going to have to do something else to um, prevent the termites from getting um, into the wood so here you can see where we've got this blocked and this blocked um, you know they could uh, get into you know I mean another thing too is get clean make sure this is clean you know if you if you have a stick or if you have a small piece of wood leaning up against this metal or leaning up against here you have just provided them with a path to build a nice tunnel so uh, make sure the area is clean underneath the foundation also this is what the corner would uh, need to look like some type of a miter there the inside corner there just to give you an idea of how we got the angle coming in so this piece of metal would basically lap and then bend up so this one would you would you could have it bend up and and bend up and then this one here could sit on top and then you could bend it to where it sat on top and then put some sealant in there to um, solve that problem and that about wraps up this video by now you should have a pretty good idea what a termite shield does I did not provide you with every single instance or, or problem you're going to run into when installing this stuff but uh, hopefully by um, showing you what I would do in this section here um, you get a pretty good idea of what you're going to need to do you know these I've seen people do it plenty of times they've installed the metal and um, left a gap you know um, in between that you know I'm not worried about this um, spot here or whatever the deal is and um, that's not going to be a good thing you're going to put the termite shield on you're going to spend the money make sure that you seal all of the um, laps where it uh, any of the breaks any of the corners in the metal and uh, don't uh, provide any areas for them to um, climb up the wall and again it's not you're not always going to be able to get everything after you build the floor after it's framed before you put the insulation in just take another look at it you know and uh, um, just you know maybe take a lunch break or something sit on a you know sit and look around and just kind of you know did I get everything because once the floor is sheeted and you got to go underneath there to uh, fix something um, you're not going to be too happy